Hello everyone, it's Jasmine, and today I am on the Scrapping for Less YouTube channel with my latest uh, card video for the Under the Sea Babies card kit for June 2019, and I have a really fun watercolor mermaid shaker. So getting into it, we've got um, one of the stamps, this is a mermaid, and we're going to color her with some Copic markers. I've stamped this on um, the Nina 110 pound Classic Crest white cardstock that is included in the kit using some ink on three blackout ink and that's a hybrid ink so you can use it for various different coloring mediums including Copics obviously because I'm using them here um, but also colored pencils and you can even use your Zig clean color markers if you don't use uh, too much water with them. It's not a watercolor paper so you don't want to use too much of a wet medium with it otherwise your your paper will pill if it's got too much moisture. Um, so you can use things like the Arteza or the Zigs, but do it very sparingly. Little, little, little bits of water. Um, I primarily use it with Copics, and I really like it for that. It's also good for ink blending and stenciling, things like that. So it's quite a versatile cardstock, and you get two sheets in the card kit. Um, so we're going to color her out. We're going to uh, fussy cut her because we're going to put her on the front of the shaker. And I, I loathe fussy cutting, but sometimes it's necessary evil. <laughs> so I've got three colors of BG markers, 02, 45, and 49. And we're going to use um, some E markers for her skin tone. I've got E11 and E13. And this is a deeper, more tan skin tone. Because obviously she's on the water all day, so she's going to have a little bit of a tan to her. Oh, and I used 21 for my lightest shade. I don't think I showed that in the video, though. So E13 is the darkest, E11 is the midtone, E21 is the lightest. And you just want to kind of add... I, I used to do my Copics starting with lightest going to the darkest, so I didn't get too dark. Um... But I wasn't getting the effect I wanted, so I've started using my darkest first, and I actually like that better. You can do it either way; it's up to you. Um, and the more, obviously, the more you practice with different mediums, the better you get. Um, and that's certainly true with Copics. They can be a little bit intimidating, um, but they are really beautiful once you get kind of your own system down. And not every system works for every person. So kind of got to figure out what works for you and go with that. So on her top, we're just going to use two colors. It's a really tiny space, um, RV06 and RV02. Obviously, 06 is the darker, 02 is the lighter. And if you have trouble with your Copics bleeding out of the stamped image lines, um, just let it dry and you're as you use them you're going to kind of learn what's too much saturation for them because when you color with these the blending happens in the paper once the paper gets wet it gets saturated with the ink and that's where the blending happens so so you do want some saturation but you can go overboard um, and so you just want to kind of let it learn how to do it by using your markers and by practicing and um, I've actually taken to taking my favorite images stamping them out and just coloring to color no no uh, intention of any card necessarily just practice and that has kind of helped me a lot gauge what's too much when to let it dry and go back into another layer etc so I think you'll find that helpful um, so we're doing the hair now, and I've got three colors of also e-markers, but definitely different tones. Um, I've got, where's my list here? Um, 79, which is the darkest, 18, which is the lightest, and then 27 is my mid-tone. So here I've got the 18, and that is my lightest tone. And you're going to want to think of your lightest tone as a highlight when you're thinking of hair or uh, clothes. So you're going to want to use your darkest and your lightest, kind of the least in your image. And then your mid-tone will be the most heavily used color. And so what I've done is I've added my 18 and then I'm going back in with the 27 
to kind of feather and blend with strokes like um, hair strands would look. Trying to achieve that anyway. Um, hair is one of those things that I have not mastered by any stretch. Um, so I really do like how this particular one turned out though. I liked the red tone and I kind of got an auburn look to the hair. So there's all the markers I've used. I'm trying to show you the chows, but it's kind of not working because I don't have big enough hands. <laughs> um, and I've seen a lot of questions on different groups concerning the difference between chows and sketch. The only difference is the size and the shape of the barrel. Um, they're the same ink, same colors, but with the sketch, you have a wider color base. Um, really, that's the only the only difference. The barrels are the same, or not the barrels, the nibs are the same, you can interchange them, um, and the colors are the same. You can refill both of them. And I use both of them, obviously. I just showed that I use them interchangeably in my, in my collection, so, so there's some info on that. And now we are getting to our watercolored background. So in the kit includes this dot card. You've got six colors on the dot card, and they are Daniel Smith watercolors. So if you're not familiar with watercolors, they are, Daniel Smith is a professional brand. They are the best quality. I've tried several different ones, um, and I love them. The ones I have in my collection are, I have several different ones, and I use several different ones. There's not one that's necessarily um, bad. There's, there's less expensive and more expensive. Um, but for this case, we're using the dot card and we're using some from my own collection. So I'm using, um, oh, what color was that? It's one of the Amazon Genuine, I think it's called. Turquoise is basically the, a, a teal and a turquoise from the dot card, as well as the moon, Moonstone, which is a shadow tone. And I'm wetting the entire panel and then going through with basically stripes of color like that, like you see me doing. Um, and then I'll add more water to get the blendy effect that I want. I don't want necessarily stripes, but I do want some texture and some movement in the background so that it kind of looks like she's floating in water because she's a mermaid. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very simple. There's nothing too difficult about the technique. Um, and this is one of the features of watercolors is that it blends and does its own thing. It kind of blooms and moves and does really pretty soft, ethereal effects. And then um, I'll go in with my Fine Tech Gold Metallic palette and I'll wet some some gold down and add that into my background. I kind of blend it in a little bit. So the idea with the gold is I want it to show up. I want you to see that there's gold in the background, but I don't want it to be like this big, bold, just random stripe of gold. Um, so I'm going to add some splatters to it of the gold paint. And then, um, I will add a shimmer spritz to the top to kind of add a little bit more moisture, get it to blend a little bit more, but not to the extent where it completely disappears. So here's our dry panel. You can see that it's kind of blended out a little bit more. And I've taken the tape off. And um, I've got some of this burlap that is in the kit too. You get a, a I don't know, probably a four foot strip, no, not that much, two foot strip of burlap that you can cut down and kind of make it fit your project. And then I've got a little bit of a tape runner that I've um, adhered the burlap with. It's a little bit tricky stuff to adhere. And then I have two little of the wooden gems that are included in the card kit. And then this dolphin I've got, I did not color on screen because it's from a different project. Um, but I do have the colors for it I used. I've got B45, B23, B000, and then BV23, and um, Cool Gray Zero for that dolphin. And I also fussy, fussy cut him out as well. And a trick to getting your fussy cut images to look um, die cut or professionally cut is take a black marker and run it around the outside perimeter of your image. And it will cover up any white border that you've left behind. Also makes it look a lot better. 
<laughs> if your rustic cutting is not perfect, like mine is not perfect. Um, and then I've got the the frame that I've done with heatproof acetate. And then I've heat embossed the sentiment and adhered that with some score tape and then some uh, 3M foam tape doubled up, trimmed down around the edges. And so that creates space for our shaker bits to move around. So there is the finished card. Thank you for joining me on the Scrapping for Less channel today. And we will catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.